Chair recognizes himself for uh, five minutes for questions. Thank you for being here today. I, I just have a couple of questions. First, you know, Ryan, um, uh, Chair, uh, Ranking Member Elliot Engel and I visited Israel. The Prime Minister talked about the Shia crescent, the movement into Iraq and Syria. Uh, we're seeing some very aggressive movements by Iran now in that region. I think also um, the lifting of the sanctions, I think a lot of that money is going into criminal enterprise now and terror organizations, Hezbollah being one of them. I think uh, ISIS is spreading now to Africa, Northern Africa, and I think Iran, <clears throat> as Zeldin pointed out, has had a very odd but relationship with uh, al-Qaeda uh, and Sunni uh, forces uh, as well. And I think that transnational organization trade uh, out of Africa into the Western Hemisphere is real, and the tri-border area where I have been is, is real. And that puts it right in our backyard. And I guess, uh, Mr. Mall said, uh, you, your experience with DEA, I, I mean, um, are we making any progress to stop uh, the flow of this transnational criminal organization that Iran has been uh, supporting? We have made progress. I mean, that's why I wrote a long paper about the whole Lebanese Canadian Bank and some of the stuff that we did. However, we have so much work to do. They're working hard right now in these operations, and I know uh, that they're going to make some more, you know, have some more success. However, we will never make the progress that you're looking for if we don't get the expertise together. We have to have the unity of effort like the strategy under Obama called for, President Obama, and under President Trump, it's the same words. But the words are no good. You need the action, you need the experts together. And until that happens, we're going to be talking about this and hopefully nothing catastrophic happens. I mean, you know, like I said, 2008, Michael Chertoff made it clear. Hezbollah makes Al-Qaeda look like the minor leagues, right? Jim Stavridis with his fireball slide, when Islamic, narco, terrorists and extremists get together, that's a very bad nightmare. General Kelly has testified so many times about this emergence down in South America, Central America, the tri-border region, mm -hmm. cocaine flowing into the Middle East, money's being made all over. So until we get our teams together and hold people accountable, we're going to be talking about this forever. And, and is that, you know, as a federal prosecutor of counterterrorism, I remember one of the first cases in the United States was actually a, a cigarette baby milk case from Hezbollah. Well, it's funny you say that, because right now I'm like obsessing over this ongoing problem with illegal cigarette trafficking, EBT fraud, drug paraphernalia, synthetic drugs, uh, all these different smaller type crimes coming together, commingling in one place, and then money is being sent through our financial system to Yemen, as an example. So until we get our experts to share that intelligence, sit in the room, break down the walls, we're going to be talking about this for a long time. Well, and I think uh, we've now, I think, reinforced our alliance with Israel, now the Saudis, so hopefully you know, the enemy, your enemy is Iran, and hopefully that they can provide some assistance. Uh, uh, Mr. Zarate, I, I know we had a meeting in my office, and I have a conflict, so we'll have to reschedule, but for now, I, I wanted to ask you the question really about sanctions. I mean, we lifted a lot of the sanctions in Iran. I have my differences with that position. Uh, uh, as I look at uh, the IRGC, which is really the terror arm, and Hezbollah too, the terror arm of Iran, um, where, would it be effective uh, sanctions? Can sanctions be effective against them? I mean, what is your position on, on the utility of designating organizations like this a foreign terror organization? Mr. Chairman, thank you, and I'm sorry to miss you later, but it's great to see you again. You too. Um, I think the designations are fine. Um, the designations allow for authorities. The question is what follows next. I, I think in the context of Iran and IRGC, there are two huge advantages that we have. The IRGC, as you said, is the centerpiece of human rights abuses, support uh, to terrorist proxies through the Quds Force, um, engaging in criminality with Hezbollah, um, and the center of gravity politically. They are also the center of gravity economically, along with the boneyards that the supreme leader and, and the clerics control. So that means you, they, they are a criminal state, they are a terrorist sponsoring state, and what you can do is economically isolate them in a way akin to what we did in the nuclear context 
through the use of sanctions and financial isolation by using sanctions, prosecutions, and all the full weight of, of things that we can do to, to isolate them from the formal financial and commercial system. Mm -hmm. That then affects the marketplace. This is why the Iranians have not felt relief. It's why they don't have transparency in their financial system. It's why they are having the, the riots in the streets. Um, and it's precisely where we have a, a, a strategic lever that we can use. As I said earlier, the Iranians are going to squawk any time we try to do this kind of a measure because they will argue that we are trying to reimpose the nuclear sanctions. We should be very clear about what the purpose of this is, and we should then enlist our allies in Europe and the rest of the world who care about human rights, who care about terrorism, who care about the issues we care about, to actually follow our lead. And so I think that's, that's critical. A final point, and this is in my testimony, and I, and I didn't mention it earlier, but it's really important. To have OFAC and uh, the financial regulators focusing on ownership and control interests is really important. This is where the market reacts to what is owned and controlled and what is the financial infrastructure and base for these organizations and these parties. We do a pretty good job of that currently, the U.S. government, but not, a, not as good a job as we should. And you now have private sector organizations like FDD, C4 ADS, and others that are trying to put out lists of the things that the North Koreans own and control, the things that IRGC controls. That is really important. So it's not just the designation at the top level as a criminal organization or a, a terrorist organization. It's what follows next. What do they own and control, and what can we isolate under principles that the international community understands? Thank you. Uh, 